Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome to the Retro Future. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Game Axe Colour. Right, okay, what's happening here? <laughs> so, this is a clone system that was made back in the day. Uh, this was made in China, as you can probably imagine, uh, and it was a portable Nintendo Entertainment System, which I had never heard of before until a few months ago, um, and uh, I just stumbled across it on eBay. They're fairly expensive, they usually sell for around 300 pounds, but I managed to get mine for just over a hundred quid, and uh, it's in really good condition. It's about 120 or 30 dollars or something like that, but yeah, they're very hard to get in very good condition, and this one is, so really pleased with it. Um, the one very interesting thing is that the color text is exactly the same as the Game Boy Color. So that's the kind of like, the real draw to this thing is like, oh, is this thing, uh, is this thing made by Nintendo? No, it's made by Redant. Redant. Red Ant. Let's have a look. So my favorite thing about this device so far is the box, because look at this. <laughs> it's the same way up, all the way around. That's where I get my excitement in life. So I love this sort of 1920s green wallpaper design that they're going for on the box, and then they peel off the edge and look, Game Axe color. It makes no sense, this was thrown together by a child. It does say over here, made in Japan, um, but it's made by Legend Technology Co. Limited. So, I don't know, maybe this is made in Japan. I, I reckon it's probably made in China, like Taiwan, or, or I don't know, some, some, some country like that, but clear picture and best quality. Um, they're optimistic. Oh, it just froze. The first extra size color portable game machine through AV line could become TV machine. <laughs> it's designed for both home and outdoor usage. You can use either six AAA batteries. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's AA. I put AA in about two minutes ago. It's, it's AA, so AAA, I don't know where that's coming from. Or an external nine volt AC adapter. The perfect design that no other company ever done. This is literally what it says that no other company ever done is lightweighted and convenient. It breaks your limitation for playing it. What does that even mean? With swappable cartridge, always enjoy new games with great joy. Okay, I'll take your word for it. We have thousands of games that we have ripped off. Uh, well, in fact, no, they're not even ripped off. They are just NES games or Famicom games because this is a Japanese market um, in stock for your choice. External AV connector enables your flexibility to play the game. How very innovative. Four above best-selling games. Look, this thing, it, it's, not, it's not the best. Uh, the translation is pretty interesting, but... It does a good enough job besides from the few facts that are actually wrong. Um, so if we open up the side, here we go, we can finally take a look at the Redant, the Red Ant, the Radant Game Axe Color. Here we go. Bear in mind, no other company has ever done this design before other than Atari and Sega <laughs> with the Nomad and the Lynx because it's very similar to those. Okay, so if we open this little polystyrene piece, I did say it was in very good condition. Look at that. It's a complete unit. Very lovely. Uh, we can take out the device. And we shall take a look at that in just a moment. Let's see if there's any more interesting translations in this. Super Game Max FC. 868. So anyone who isn't familiar, FC is Famicom. Usually on these clones, Famicom clones, you get a lot of uh, FCs in the codes, names and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, from my very limited amount of knowledge, that would look like Japanese. So maybe this was made in Japan. I kind of find it hard to believe. And here is the device itself. Now the only problem with my one is that the screen, the polarizing filter, has burnt, it needs to be replaced. Uh, you might be able to see some very big sort of marks along it, that is the glue that sort of hardened and then just cracked. So it's not actually a scratched screen, I just need to take the whole thing apart and replace the polarizing filter, which maybe I'll do on my second channel. So the first thing I have to say, the quality is excellent. A lot of thought has gone into this, it feels 
excellent. Um, it's a nice sort of translucent black. Uh, you can sort of semi see through it, words, um, which is nice, I guess. It's sort of a higher quality looking thing than just some cheap plastic. The plastic is very, very high quality feeling and it does feel like something that Sega would manufacture. Um, Legend Technologies Co. Limited on the back there. This looks like the sort of the Game Gear stand thing, like connector that they had on the back. I can't imagine there was a long line of accessories for this device. Um, there's the, the double A's, definitely double A's. Not sure why they say AAA on there, um, but it takes uh, two loads of three, kind of like the Game Gear. Um, you got DC power on the top because, as it said multiple times, you can also plug this into the TV. However, I don't have a, I don't have one of these. I'm, I thought I did. I don't know where it is, um, so I can't capture any footage from it. But it is just going to be an NES uh, Famicom clone. Um, start and select is up here. Again, feels really nice. You've got an actual uh, momentary switch. I don't know what that's called pops in and out to turn the LCD screen on and off. So presumably when you plug it into your TV, you can turn the screen off so you're not seeing twice, two of it. You got a reset button down here. You got your contrast and volume wheel and a headphone jack. And you have an additional two controller ports, which is really nice because on the Sega Nomad, when you plug that in, if you want to do two player, someone's got to wield the Nomad. Uh, so it's really cool that they've got player one and player two out the side. Uh, you've got a little mono speaker down here. It's pretty decent. It's quite satisfactory. D-pad feels great. I know it looks like one of those weird ones that sort of rolls around loads, but it has actually got definitive uh, presses on either direct or all four directions. So yeah, honestly, in terms of this feel, it's fantastic. You've also got AV in so that you can use this thing as a TV if you want, which is just... I don't know why you'd want to do that, but what a fantastic little thing to whack in there. Um, obviously, Sega had that, but you had to get the TV tuning thing uh, to go in the top. But that's it, pretty much, for the uh, for the actual device, other than the fact that you've got the cartridge port at the top. And if I take a couple of legendary Famiclone <laughs> games like Dinosaur Land and Super Mario, look at the artwork on that. Absolutely fantastic. I love these things. Um, you can see it plugs into the top. It doesn't go very far down, but look at that. It's beginning to look a lot like a console. So let's turn it on and see how it does. We'll start off with uh, Super Mario, actually, because everybody knows that one. Oh, lovely. So you're going to have to slightly forgive me on the screen because it is, as I said, quite bad. But if we turn it on, nothing's going to happen. Is that even in? There we go. Just had to fill around with all the different things at the bottom. Okay, so you can see the screen. It's a little bit dark down here. It makes me think maybe that one of the, uh, I don't know if there's like a fluorescent tube behind here. You can actually see, um, it looks like there's two fluorescent tubes. I'm not sure if you've ever seen the inside of like a, uh, a Game Gear, um, but there's sort of like a fluorescent tube that runs across the behind of it. It kind of looks like this bottom one is failing in this back corner. As I said, speaker sounds great. All right, let's try that again. Very difficult to see the screen. And you can't expect to see anything from down here because the viewing angles don't exist. <laughs> there is no viewing angle, it's front on or nothing at all. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Look at that. I mean it works fantastic and there is absolutely no problems at all. No. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, it's absolutely excellent. I think it is quite literally a hardware clone, so there is no problems at all with the emulation. Uh, well, there is no emulation. It's a hardware clone. There's no problems with it, the gameplay at all. Everything runs great. Everything sounds great. Unfortunately, it doesn't look great, but I guess we can put that down to the problem with that tube and also the burnt polarizing filter. I imagine when this thing was new, it was probably very vibrant and also quite like good really because if you think this is the same technology that was in in the game gear and, and the links and stuff so and the nomad so uh yeah this thing's really standing up as quite a decent little device i died again great uh let's play dinosaur land because i've not actually played that one before 
Um, but yeah, this thing's sweet, right? I mean, Nintendo never made one of these. So I imagine if this was actually something that Nintendo made, this would have been very decent. I mean, obviously later on they released the, uh, the Game Boy games, uh, the NES, the Famicom games on the Game Boy, but this is damn awesome. Right, how do I play this? No way do you have to shoot the little dinosaurs. What? I thought Jurassic Park was all about- Oh, sorry, this is Dinosaur Land. <laughs> They're about violence in D Dinosaur Land. I can't see what's going on, though. Oh, it just froze. Maybe we should uh, wrap it up there. <laughs> There we go. That is the Game Axe Color. It probably was a lot better when it was brand new back in the day. These sorts of technologies that they used in these things eventually wore out uh, the fluorescent tubes, the, the, the weird glue they used on the polarizing filters and stuff. So back in the day, this thing would have been sweet. You could definitely mod the, modify this and uh, bring it up to speed with some of the modern stuff and mods that they you can get, but unfortunately because they're so rare, and also there's no point, I mean emulation is a thing and you can get a little device this big from Amazon for £5 that runs all the games. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, that is the Game Axe Colour, I've been Elliot, you've been you, please subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!